What is up guys, Jamie the Kid Zero Zero here, coming to you guys with a brand new deck profile. Today, I'm gonna to be bringing you a profile of the Burning Abyss deck that I've been tooling around with. Um, this isn't the exact build I took to my locals that I spoke about in yesterday's video, but honestly, this is a bit more of a refined build that myself and a friend played on Dueling Book a couple of weeks back. Honestly, I'm fairly happy with it. There are definitely some kind of changes I would make um, this was just kind of a pilot I really wanted to bring you guys and I know that one of the most requested decks on the most recent video uh, I posted asking you guys to tell me about decks was Burning Abyss. So I figured we'll dive into this build that I've been working with and I'll show you the ideas I've been having. I've actually played Burning Abyss on off for a fair few events now. I played it at YCS London and went 8-3. Um, my actual loss that put me out of the event was to Mirko Zanelli, the actual player that won the whole event. Um, and one of my other losses was to, so no, 8-2-1, uh, um, and my other loss was to um, a previous European champion, uh, Stefano Mamoli, so I can't really complain at both, <laughs> both of those losses. But in that case, I didn't end up making a deck profile because it was basically just a net deck of um, Joshua Uster's list, so I figured you guys wouldn't be interested in seeing the same thing again. But let's get into this one, this is a bit more interesting. So starting us off, we are playing a 10 monster BA component, we're playing 2 Skarm, uh, 2 Farfa, uh, one Graf, one Seer, uh, one Leibic, one Alich, one Kalkab, one Barbar. It's the standard lineup. It's everyone will kind of call it the cliche Tom Rose lineup, but I kind of agree with it. I don't. I don't ever find myself wanting them any more than this, or any less. Any less than this. I appreciate the lists that play two Kalkab, two Alich, two Barbar, and they're really cool as well. They're much. They like their hands. I suppose are a lot easier. But I find that, like, uh, since I refined it down to this number of 10, I never really needed more. I've not, I've not found myself kind of craving a BA. There's normally one BA in hand, and then there's a way to make a rank three. Uh, yeah, rank three. And that's all you need. But yeah, so 10 BAs. Then moving through the deck, we played the three Fiendish Rhino Warrior. This is a Highlander list, um, but... I, I still think that the Rhino Warrior is just obscenely strong, the amount of plays it allows you to make. It's just a perfect, perfect card to have in your hand when you're actually building your opening turn. Moving through, uh, this was stolen from a recent Tom Rose deck profile. Two Mathematician. Um, test in testing, this has been absolutely obscene. Um, the play that he references, sending the Edge Imp Sabres, is absolutely unfair. I was already playing Edge Imp Sabres as a way to put Maliciouses back in the deck and as another kind of rank 3 utility card to have in Grave, but this just blew the card out of the water. I completely forgot this card existed. So big props to Tom Rose and Team Karibos. Do check them out for, uh, for his kind of thoughts on that. Um, moving through the list, um, just because my phone has now given me the 20% warning marvellously, we do play a danger component. Um, so at the moment, I'm still a big fan of the 2-2-2, which is 2 Suchinoko, 2 Jackalope, 2 Nessie. I'm still not sure how I feel about Nessie um, in terms of its kind of playability. It's really good for kind of link climbing, but of course it not being a level 3 really irks me. But of course it is the most valid card in the fact that when it gets hit, it's the only danger that still really replaces itself. I'm still kind of battling in my head as to whether or not I might want to kind of experiment with something else, but for the moment it's the most viable one. And I can't really justify going to 3 and 3 because I already have enough of a struggle with Hydralander as it is off of some of these. So, ah, we'll figure it out in, uh, in more intense testing. Um, but yeah, this is a bit of the kind of extension. As you'll see with almost all BA decks, the Sekers Light versions especially, they're pretty much just 10 BAs and then all extenders, and then maybe a couple of boss monsters. I'm um, playing the double Gallus. Um, I, mean, I, I, I even played double in the Rescue Cat build that I've tested because Jackalope is a beast now, so that really solves that whole problem. So double Gallus, I think, is a shoo-in in any BA deck at the moment. Uh, double Malicious, of course, the beautiful hit off of Gallus. Um, I'm still uncertain how I feel about Malicious because, um, really, it's an awkward card in terms of the fact that it's now at two. But, so the advantage of playing it isn't nearly as strong and it is a really heavy brick. But because I, in my own method of play, I am very nightmare heavy. I almost always make a nightmare as one of my early plays. Drawing this is not a problem for me because I will almost always be able to get into Grave. And if I can't get into Grave, kind of by discarding it, I can easily put it on the deck and then mill it by making the Mathematician play. If you go summon a Mathematician, when you've drawn Malicious, you can send this, put the Malicious back, special this, and it's it, all of a sudden your entire play is fixed. So I, I really quite like that. I'm playing the one Destrudo because I'm playing a couple of Synchro Monsters in the extra deck, not just the one. 
So I've been really enjoying some of the testing I've been doing with Distrudo. So he's going to be a lot of fun in the future. Might bump him up because I am playing the Yazi Meme combo. So bumping this up to make it a bit more consistent may be handy. But I'm also really not that big of a fan of play, paying 4k life points. But hey, when you're OTKing your opponent and making crazy bat, crazy uh, link climbs, uh, maybe this is acceptable. Uh, we then play rounding off one Fairy Tale Snow and then one Tour Guide from the Underworld. Then to round off the monster count, we are playing a few hand traps uh, because I actually treat these as legitimate tuners for my plays, which we'll get to in a moment, which is two Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring uh, and two Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit. And then of course, no, no uh, Highlander BA deck would be complete without three copies of Orbital Hydralander. Just absolutely obscene card. You're basically winning the game if you draw this. So. But yeah, that's the main reason I like playing the deck. Hydralander is just unfair. It's the one card that really makes it possible to you to go kind of like outright win if you go first. If you get forced to go first, Beatrice, this is just game. So that is the total monster lineup. That should be 37 cards. And then, of course, for the spells, we are playing three Sekka's Light. I'm trying to pick up some more supers. I've got two. I can't find a second at the moment. And then I need to get a third. And then, because I mean, look at these. These are gorgeous. Need to pick up a few more of those. But yeah, Seconds Light is just unfair. If you draw it, you're probably winning the game. So, like, that's why we play the deck. Um, then in terms of the extra deck, it is as follows. And I'm not sure how I feel about the Link Monsters in here. But it's kind of like the Link Monsters that I wanted to just jump to when I put the deck together. Again, because of my work situation, I kind of just throw decks together for locals. Based purely on theory, usually on my lunch break, just before I actually go to the locals in the evening. So we're playing two Dante, three is still wholly unnecessary, two is all you'll ever make. Um, one Beatrice, and I'm still playing the Pilgrim. I'm an absolute Pilgrim addict because I make Beatrice pretty much every single game. So I almost always feel that Pilgrim has to be in there as that option, just because it, it gives this so much more value. Um, in terms of the synchro monsters, that's not a synchro monster. Whoops, pulled that out too quickly. Um, we are playing one Yazi, and then I'm playing one Brianak, Dragon of the Ice Barrier. So Brianak is an interesting play because it makes all of your hand traps valid tuners, um, and it makes this guy even more interesting when you're interacting with like level fours that you have in the deck, especially Snow. Um, and this lets you essentially unpick some of your awkward hands. Cool plays that this includes is you can make this, send Malicious from hand, activate Malicious, special another Malicious, and overlay the two into uh, Beatrice. It's a crazy strong board clear that can discard your dangers and activate their effects, activate BAs. It's really, really, I like, I really like the interactions that this brings to the game, and I felt like it was stronger than, oh, what's his name, than Virgil. So I thought this guy would be a good bit of fun. Uh, so I put him in. We've tested it on Dueling Book, and it was pretty, pretty good. But uh, I haven't actually managed to summon it in real life, even though I have this gorgeous DT one. But who knows? We'll continue testing him and see how he goes. But yeah, Brianak. Love it. Um, then for the Link Monsters, like I said, this is kind of just like a Link Brew. Uh, one Link Spider because we're playing the Mare Mare and it lets me use the tokens. Uh, Underclock Taker because you need it for the Beatrice play. Uh, a Nightmare Complement in the form of one Phoenix, one Cerberus, one Unicorn. I really want to go back to two Phoenix, but we have to find the space. Um, I'm then playing one Curious for the Snow combo. One Trisbania because it's just unfair the kind of uh, back row blowouts this card creates. And then the two um, Boral Odes, or the Boral Ode and the Boral Sword. Boral Sword just creates obscene OTKs out of nowhere as long as you have four monsters you can summon, which is just dumb. Um, and then Boral Ode just lets you take things that don't belong to you, including game states. So. That really brings me to about the end of that one. I hope you've all enjoyed kind of hearing my insight on BA. It's kind of weird that I've not actually kind of put BA down in front of you guys before, but it's it's really a passion piece for me at the moment. I'm really a big fan of BA in the format, mainly because I suppose for me, it's something that's fairly easy to pick up having played Burning Abyss on and off for the entirety of its history. But yeah. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Um, I have experimented with alternative variants. So there was, I can't find them now, of course, um, while I'm recording the video, but I have had alternative variants in the deck that I've been playing. Um, the kind of, the Brianak play was a little easier in the version in which I was playing the light and dark level four dragons. 
Let me know what cards you want to see come in and what cards you think I should take out down in the comment section below. It's always great to have you guys to help me on this. But that being said, I hope you have all enjoyed. Please leave a like if you did so. Subscribe if you're new here and you want to see more of the same. And I'll see you guys in the comment section and on the next video with some more Yu-Gi-Oh! related content. Peace out. Bye-bye.